Happy Tuesday, my name is Tila and today we're going to create a custom neon Procreate brush. I'll also share how to add a glowing effect to any custom brush in the future. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. Okay, we've got our brand new canvas and the first thing we're going to do is change the background color to black on the very first layer. So if I open my layers palette, you can see that first layer has black on it. So I'm going to rename this layer black. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it and select white. And then I'm going to navigate to my free mono weight brush and I'm just going to draw a circle on this layer. So draw and hold and then hit edit shape and then choose circle, and then we're going to fill that circle in with white. So now we just have a circle that is white. And we're going to reduce the size just a little bit. I'm scaling mine down to about 220 pixels, and then just moving it into place, waiting for those crosshairs to appear. And if you have uniform and snapping turned down at the bottom, then you'll see those crosshairs. Next, I'm going to label this layer circle, create a brand new layer right above it, and label this layer outer circle. I'm going to increase the size of my brush to about 75% and draw a circle around my original circle. So it kind of looks like the target logo now. So hit edit shape, choose circle, and now also center this outer circle until you see those crosshairs. Next, we're going to make sure we're working non-destructively. So we're going to head back into our layers palette and we're going to group all of our layers together, the black layer, circle, and outer circle. Let's label this group unblurred because we're about to blur some elements. So duplicate that layer. We're just going to hold on to the unblurred layer in case we ever change our minds or want to blur less or blur more in the future. We have the raw assets in order to be able to do that. So on this brand new group, this is the one that we're going to start blurring elements. So I'm going to label this group blurred. Toggle it down and choose the circle layer. Next, we're going to come to our magic wand tool, choose Gaussian blur, select layer, and drag this up. I found that the best size is right around 10%, between 10 and 15. So I'm going to come up to about 12.5% for the inner circle. And then the outer circle, we're going to do the same thing. Magic wand, Gaussian blur, layer, drag it up. This one I like keeping around 10%. I actually chose to go with 9% right here. So by adding these blurs to our different elements, that's what's going to make our brush appear to be glowing. I'm going to toggle this layer up, duplicate the layer, and turn off the original blurred layer because we need to flatten this layer. So tap on the group thumbnail and choose flatten. We need to have it flattened in order to apply it as the shape of our brush. So now we're going to tap on that layer thumbnail, choose copy, and we're going to create the new brush, add it in, and apply all the settings we need. So head into your brush library, choose whatever category you'd like this brand new brush to be added to, hit the plus icon, and now we have a default brush with all the basic settings. Under stroke path, I'm going to reduce spacing down to none and increase my streamline all the way to max. On the taper category, we're going to leave everything as it is. Under the shape, this is where we're going to put in what we just created. So hit edit, and then under import, you want to choose paste, and we're going to paste in what we just created since we had copied it previously, and then hit done. Under our shape source, you want to make sure your rotation is toggled all the way up to follow stroke, and everything else can remain the default. At the very bottom, you just want to make sure improve filtering is selected. Next, under grain, we want to keep everything the same here as well, and at the very bottom, improve filtering is also turned on. Under rendering, you want to change this to intense blending, and under blend mode, you want to change that to screen. By changing the blend mode to screen, it's just going to make it have a more brighter effect because this is a neon brush. We're going to keep everything the same under wet mix. Under color dynamics, you can change some of these if you want the colors to change as you use it. I'm going to leave it as the default. Under dynamics, you just want to make sure your size and your opacity are set at zero. And under Apple Pencil, we're going to keep the size at zero, but scale opacity all the way down to none. This will ensure that the brush does not change size with added pressure, and it does not change in transparency either. Everything else can remain the same. And then under Properties, we're going 
gonna leave everything here the same as well. And if you go to about this brush, you can label your brush. I'm going to label this one Neon Glow, and then you can add in your information. Okay, so now you can see we've got our brand new Neon Glow brush at the top of our category that we chose, and now we can test it out. I'm going to change the background color to black because this is a neon brush. We want it to appear nice and bright on a black background. I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top, and now I'm going to select the color that I'm going to paint in. So with this style of brush, since it's glowing and bright, we want to choose choose actually a darker color because the color will naturally become brighter and lighter as you paint with the brush. So I'm going to grab like a teal color, but I'm going to choose a color in this area of my color sphere. I'm going to scale down the size. So now when I write with it, you can see how much brighter that color becomes because we have a glowing brush. I can change the color just by dragging the slider around. This one's going to appear more bluish purplish, and you can see how we've got that inner line in there. I kind of want to zoom in here so you can see that inner tube of fluorescent and then the outer glow around it. So it's mimicking that neon style. So that's how to create a custom glowing neon Procreate brush in just a few quick steps. If you'd like to download this brush for free, I have also popped it into my free Every Tuesday resource library, and there's a link right in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next week.